Hello, I'm J.E. I am an artist and I also teach art. Um, I uh, like to make art a lot of different ways. Sometimes I dance, sometimes I work with technology, and one material I really love working with is paper. Um, so today we're going to be exploring some paper magic. Maybe you've seen one of these before. Sometimes people call them cootie catchers or fortune tellers. But I think that today we're going to call it a story maker because um, it's a way of making a choose your own adventure story. These are done a couple of different ways um, with lots of different kinds of stories in them. But we can think about uh, a way to make it that uh, has different parts of a story. So the parts that I'm thinking of are like one really big part of a story is character. Another big part of a story is the setting or where the story takes place. And another big part of the story is like what actually happens, what the plot is. So maybe we can have a part of it that shows who's the main character in the story, where does the story take place, and what happens. When we are making our fortune teller or our story maker, we need a square piece of paper. But it's OK if you don't start with a square piece of paper. You can start with a rectangle. It's OK if you use a blank piece of paper like this, or notebook paper, or even cut off a piece of a paper bag. I'm going to use some paper that is a little bit bigger than regular notebook paper. That way it's a little bit easier to see on camera. So I have a piece of paper that's like this. And so to make our square, what I'm going to do is fold this so that this side touches this side. So we have this going to our adjacent side. And when I'm making a fold like this, I like the fold to be pretty crisp usually. And so I'm going to use the back side of this colored pencil to make my fold a little bit crisper. If we cut right along here, then we'll have a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this part up too, just so we know with our fold exactly where we want to cut. And it looks like this. So if you have scissors, you can go ahead and cut right along here. If you don't have scissors, that's also OK. What you can do is this crease, you can take it and you can fold it back and forth a couple of times so the paper has a memory of where it needs to be cut. So I'm going to fold it again the other way and back once more. And then you can carefully start right here and tear right along the crease that you made. And now I have two pieces of paper and one of them is a square. To make our fortune teller, what I do is I start by folding the paper in half. And in half again, the other way. Then I take each corner and fold it to the center. This is going right to the center like this. Again, trying to get those creases nice and tight. It's okay if your creases aren't perfect, but you want to make sure that your pieces of paper don't overlap, because it's going to be a lot harder to lift up your flaps if the paper overlaps. Now that you've done this side, flip it over to the other side, and we do the same thing again where we're folding right to the center.
And this is what I have. To make it in from this flat shape into the fortune teller shape, I usually just fold it back and forth a couple of times. And then what I wanna do is sort of push in like this. And then you'll pull out the flaps. And then you have your fortune teller. You can lift up the flaps to see what's on the inside. On this one, I started to draw out what the different parts are. So what we can see here is that in our fortune teller, we have a part that I am calling the outside. The outside part is the part that we can see. So we have one, two, three, four sections on the outside. Then we have a part that I call the middle. So this is the part where you're going like this. And sometimes in the middle, sometimes people will choose to do a small triangle or choose to do the big triangle. So on here, I labeled it 1A and 1B. And on the other side, it's 2A and 2B. And I labeled it this way, where it goes 1, 3, 2, 4, because I want to know that 1 is across from 2 and 3 is across from 4. So if it's this way, I can see 3 and 4. If it's this way, I can see 1 and 2. And then there's the last part, and that's the part that I call inside. So inside is where you have your last scene. So I have inside 1, inside 2, inside 3, and inside 4. So if I unfold this all the way, we'll see that on the edges, we have our one, two, three, and four. Our inside scenes are one, two, three, and four. And then we have our middle, and our middle is kind of split in a funky way, where this is 2A and this is 2B, and these parts get squished together when you fold it like this. Now we can think about where we want to put the different parts and what we want to put inside of it. So I have this extra scrap of paper from when I made my paper into a, um, into a square. And so on this paper, I'm going to start brainstorming some different ideas. So I think that on the outside, what I have right around here, in this one, I want it to be character. Um, so that's who's the main character in the story. So I'm going to write outside. And then we can think of a bunch of different ideas for who this main character might be. I love working with animals, both real and imagined. So I'm going to write bird, alligator, fish monster, ghost, starfish, dog, cat, human. So those are some options, right? Maybe I want a mermaid too. And then on the middle part, the part that we have on the inside, we can think about the setting or where this might take place. So maybe we are on a boat in the ocean, or maybe we are in the mountains, or in a tree house, or maybe we're in a regular house, or maybe we're in a forest, or a volcano, or underwater, or in outer space, maybe on a space station. And then the next part you want to think about is what's the action that takes place? What's the plot? What happens in the story? So um, 
This is outside, middle, inside. So inside, maybe we can have something like climbing into the sky. Growing wings. Getting launched into outer space. Playing soccer. Getting caught in a storm. Becoming a ghost. So I have a bunch of different ideas, which is great, because now I can use some of those ideas when I'm working on my story maker. So I'm gonna put my ideas over here so that I can refer back to them. I have one that I already started, and I have two characters on it, but I haven't done any of the other parts. So I'm gonna start here with character. And when you are making your story maker, you can use anything to color with if you want. You can use just a pencil, you can use markers, you can use colored pencils. And one of my favorite things to work with are watercolors. So I already have a monster and a merperson, and I think next I want to do um, another alligator kind of creature. Um, so I know that when this is folded this way, that this is the direction that these go. And so because I know this, I know that I need to make my character standing up this way. If I do it this way, it's gonna be upside down. It can be helpful to write a note on a piece of paper so you know which direction things go. That's part of the reason why I made this one. That way, when I look at it, I know which direction this is. So I wrote outside one, and I know it's not gonna be this way, right? Because that's upside down. So for my next one, I'm gonna go ahead and start on my character, and I am doing my alligator creature. My last character um, is going to be a bird. So now I have all of my characters and I can start on the next part. So I could do my setting or I could do my plot or my action. I need this to dry out just a little bit, so I'm gonna work on my inside part first. And if I look at this handy guide, then I'll know that my inside parts need to be facing this way. So for my inside part, let's see, what are some different parts that could happen, some different actions? I think that I want one of them where the character is getting launched into outer space. So I'm going to make my rocket ship And another thing that I think I want to happen is that there are clouds and there is like a ladder that falls down from the clouds.
And in the next scene, I'm thinking that there's going to be um, a big fire that happens. Um, But I want something about the fire going out too, so I'm gonna draw these sort of like waves of like water or something on the side. Or maybe it's wind, so maybe the fire is actually just getting bigger. And then in my last panel, I think I want to do one about playing soccer. So I'm going to draw a ball. Accidentally going over a fence. There, so now I have my inside and I have my outside. Um, and I think I need to wait a minute for this to dry. I think that this is almost dry enough, we'll go for it. Um, we might get a little, a few splotches, but that's okay. So on the inside of this one, I think that this is where we're gonna put our setting. So with this one, I'm gonna have one where it takes place in the forest. Another one that takes place in the ocean, but on top of the water. Maybe there's a boat in the ocean. good place to live, huh? Um, and then the next one, we're gonna have it be um, at the bottom of the ocean. So these are my four scenes. Um, so on here we have our four characters. We have our monster and our mer person and our alligator and our bird. So who do you want to choose to be your main character? You can choose that. And now, tell me when to stop. All right, we're gonna be in the forest. And then in the forest, what's happening is that there is a soccer ball that goes over the fence. I wonder what that story is about. Thank you so much for playing with me today. There are so many different options for making your own, choose your own adventure, story maker. I would love to see what you come up with. Um, my name is Jia E, and I am an artist, and I love working with paper. Mm -hmm.